93 everybody, Granny here. Now, it will have escaped no one's notice that the public image of the Catholic Church is not particularly good right now. There are various reasons for this, but uh, I can't help but think that it is a significant contributing factor that the current Pope seems to be some kind of goblin. So in the efforts of preserving the integrity of that proud old institution, I offer these uh, helpful tips for public relations for uh, Herr Ratzinger. I think that even with his obvious handicaps, he'll be able to provide a passable imitation of humanity as long as he follows these simple rules. Rule number one, when meeting with an important visitor, it is uh, vital to select a location that is clean, brightly lit, well ventilated, and free of cobwebs, and most importantly, human remains. It is important to provide refreshments. Now I know that His Holiness wishes to make his commitment to the doctrine of transubstantiation clear, by telling his guests that he never drinks wine sends the wrong message. Rule number two. While I have the utmost respect for His Holiness's playful sense of humor, he should not refer to Vatican City as the doom base. Now I'm certain that he says it with a twinkle in his eye, such as might indicate an ironic wit at work. But that is not always immediately perceptible to outside observers. Rule number three. It would greatly improve the position of His Holiness at public gatherings if he refrained from talking to himself. And if he's going to talk to himself, he should really use first-person pronouns like I or me. Most importantly, if he absolutely must talk to himself in public, I strongly advise that His Holiness immediately discontinue the practice of referring to himself as my precious. Rule number four, although I appreciate that His Holiness uh, enjoys entertaining his guests with musical selections on the organ, he should perhaps choose bright, cheerful pieces to lighten the mood. Bach and his fugues are to be avoided at all costs. Once again, I don't mean to discourage His Holiness's playful sense of humor, but the Imperial March is not appropriate material. Rule number five, Although I appreciate that His Holiness uh, loves and cares for all living things, I can't help but notice that he shows a disproportionate enthusiasm for the subphylum Shella Serrata, particularly when inviting guests to explore confined spaces. The spider box has to go. This will no doubt be difficult for His Holiness to hear, but the last person who stepped into his parlor suffered a massive heart attack. I recommend that he suspend his efforts to promote a pro-spider attitude by this method. It's also worth mentioning that when one of his guests does suffer a cardiac arrest, the appropriate response is to call for medical attention. Uh, this is done so by screaming, help, help, ambulance, not feed, feed my pretties. Okay, seriously though, some of you out there might have wondered uh, why they did make this guy Pope. I mean, he's scary, he's got a bad history, his theology is suspect at best, so why? The truth is, back in the day, this guy covered more ass than pampers. Everybody's favorite, John Paul II, kept his hands clean because Ratzinger handled the dirt for years and years and years. So when JP finally died, goblin or not, it was his turn. Don't believe me? Check it out.